خالد ما هو لا بيعرف بالمخدرات ولا بالقنبله ولا بيستعمل سلاح ولا كان كان العائله كلها بتعرف بتقوس هو ما بيعرف ياذي نمله. I met Mustafa in 1974. I went to his home in uh, Balbek, actually in Shrowney, uh, where the Jaffer clan lives. And uh, they have two homes, one in Shrowney, one in uh, Hermel, in central Balbek, in central uh, Lebanon, in the Bekaa Valley. And uh, I got to know a great deal about his family. Uh, this was in the pre-terrorist days, really. The Jaffa family seat. The bullet holes from Hezbollah. The shrine inside to Khalid. Grandfather Mustafa Jafar. Khalid was his favorite grandson. <laughs> خالد ثم اللي قبل ما يطلع على الطيارة بيجي محمد الحوراني بيلحقوا على المطار بيقول له خذ هالهدية مسجلة عطال مسجلة كان فيها 2 كيلو هوريين وإجا بال وإجا وطلع على ألمانيا أه... لقوا أشخاص بألمانيا أخذوا المسجلة منه و... واختفوا لمدة يوم رجعوا لعنده لعند خالد وأخذوه مصالح كثيرة وكان يتصل ببيو بجده وعطول خالد وجد يجي يشرب قهوة مع والدي كل يوم ويحكي له شو صار مع خالد. This, this was a this was a control bag going through. It wouldn't go through passport control. It wouldn't go through customs. Uh, it would be uh, it would just be passed through. It would be either carried through by the informant or by somebody who was a part of the local uh, police constabulary. I received a telephone call from somebody I knew in British customs advising me to, or suggesting that we look at the possibility that a bag may have been switched at Frankfurt Airport by the Turkish workers uh, because of known uh, drug operations being run through Frankfurt Airport. An HM customs officer involved in uh, the investigation of uh, narcotics um, had left a message for me and I subsequently contacted him and uh, I met with him and he advised me that uh, he'd been in Frankfurt at a meeting of uh, drug uh, enforcement agencies from Germany, America and Britain and that uh, it was well known and discussed at that meeting that uh, Pan Am, were, uh, as an airline, was being used as a drug conduit. To my knowledge, Pan Am had not been informed of any controlled drug shipments. I'm, through my uh, service with Pan Am at Heathrow, I was not notified of any drug shipments and it would have been a requirement under the uh, FAA regulations and the DOT regulations for us to be notified if some outside agency was putting baggage onto our aircraft. I certainly didn't know and I, I know nobody else in the Pan-American organization that I've been in contact with was aware of it. Although I've not handled any drug shipments, I would assume that it would be normal procedures or practice to bypass the passenger searching stage and take the bag through other routes and take direct to the aircraft thereby avoiding possible searches to prevent unauthorized people knowing what was being shipped. I was aware of this, uh, uh, some information with regards to the possibility that uh, passengers on board the 103 uh, could have been involved in the uh, uh, illegal movement of narcotics. Um, and some names were mentioned to me, particularly one passenger by the name of Jafar. When I was working in Cyprus in 1988 at DEA, we were working in a penthouse apartment 
on top of a building down the road from the American Embassy. Uh, we answered the phone, Uremi Trading Company, which was a cutout proprietary company uh, used by the CIA and the DEA uh, for various and sundry purposes. One was uh, uh, the, these uh, drug informants would come in on the sunny boat from uh, Juni. Uh, the Cypriot police narcotics people would bring them up to the apartment. They would all sit around the living room and drinking coffee and uh, chatting away while I was over in my computer working away. And then they would be called up one by one on the telephone to go over and meet with Hurley at the American Embassy. And one of the people that I observed there was this kid that we used to call, that was referred to as Nazi, uh, Nazi Jafar. Well, I knew from the conversations around me in 88 that he was involved in, con in controlled deliveries. And there's no doubt in my mind about that at all. Uh, so when I found out he was on 103 and he was killed, and that there was a controlled delivery going through at the time, and the fact that uh, I knew the security problems that the DEA had and the relationships that they were having with some people in Lebanon that we had already raised as an issue as far as security is concerned, it was very simple for me to put one and one together and get the big two uh, that the DEA's operation had a role in all of this. In 1990, before a congressional committee, the Drug Enforcement Agency, Stephen Green, acting administrator, will deny under oath that there were any controlled drug deliveries through Frankfurt Airport in 1988. But in Virginia court documents, deliveries are documented. A DEA agent has testified being at Frankfurt Airport in 1989. The drug traffic was so heavy by then that there was a full-time DEA liaison agent, Thomas Slovenke, at the airport. One convicted Lebanese Bacar dealer had even tried to contact a Pan Am pilot but Frankfurt had been used as a base for covert drug and CIA operations long before. In 1984, I was undercover, and uh, my base of operations was uh, uh, in Würzburg at the headquarters of the 3rd Infantry Division. And uh, I was contacted by a fellow who worked for Oliver North. I was uh, asked uh, to uh, develop an operation laying a trail which would, would lead back to Libya and make it look as though a Libyan effort was behind this to bring drugs into the United States. The way to do this is to make it look as though the material had been shipped from uh, Europe to Libya and then from Libya to the United States. I was buying a precursor for the manufacture of speed and methyl benzyl ketone, which has the same chemical formula as cinnamic acid, which is something harmless that they put into toothpaste with flavoring. I'd buy that and the labels would be switched and the cinnamic acid would be shipped to Libya. 